Hi, my name is Julie Ann Link, and welcome to the Music Link. This week on the Let's Link project, I'd like to welcome Dr. Erica Chu. Thank you so much for being here, Erica. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me here. So to start out, Erica, could you please share with us who you are and an overview of what you do as a professional musician? Okay. Um... My name is Shihan Chu. You can all call me Erica. Um, I'm a freelance bassoonist in America and in Asia, and also work as an arts administrator or associate for nonprofit organizations or projects or events. Um, since I was a doctoral degree student from University of Colorado at Boulder, I knew I wanted to be a musician, an educator, and especially an art coordinator. So because I endeavor to service activity to give back of what I have learned and to my next generations and then to my community and to my friends too. Mm -hmm. Erica, could you share with us about where you grew up and how you got introduced to music and the bassoon? Oh my god. Okay. I grew up in Taiwan and I started the piano when I was age three. And I played the piano for a while until one day I went to see a wing ensemble concert. I told my mom I fall in love with that big, long instruments. So I started to play bassoon when I was at second grade in the elementary school. Wow. <laughs> Amazing, Erica. Could mm -hmm. you tell us where you studied music and what the programs were like? Um, so I started um, in Taiwan, we have a special class or some special school for students with music specialty. So I auditioned and got into that. It's very similar to preschools, Julia preschools or Curtis preschools, but those schools in Taiwan are starting from elementary school. So I was in that system throughout middle school and high school and came to America for my bachelor degree. Wow. And then share, could you share about you with your doctorate too? Oh, my doctorate? Yes. So I went to University of Oklahoma for my bachelor and master degree and studied with Carl Rath. And then went to University of Colorado at Boulder and studied with Yoshi Ishikawa for my doctoral degree. Erica, could you share more about your teachers and how they influenced you? All of my teachers influenced me a lot through my music life. A little bit fun story to share about is um, Professor Carl Rath, who is the per first person who introduced me to the swing. Um, just one day while in the Bussoon Ensemble studio rehearsal and we were rehearsing one of Carl's arrangements. If people know him, he is a big rock and roll, Beatles, that genre, big fan. So we have a lot of arrangements of that style of music. And suddenly he stopped the rehearsal and asked, who is playing straight eighth note? <laughs> I would raise my hand and say, I am. <laughs> I was like, was I supposed to not play as it is written on the music? That's eighth straight, no. He said, but this is a swing here. I was like, what? What's a swing? It's not straight eighth, no. And at that moment, the whole studio realized I don't know what is a swing because mm -hmm. when I grew up in Taiwan, we have strict classical training. Like we, well, for me, I don't have much experience with other style of music. 
So I don't know what's a swing. I don't know what's jazz. I don't know what's blues. I will say something like that. So that's the influence I got when I came to America. I explored to much more different diversities music than I have ever before. And then Erica, could you share a bit more about what Yoshi taught you? Yoshi taught me, he taught me a lot of things. Um, he gave me a lot of uh, confidence of my playing, uh, a lot of confidence of uh, he even, at my degree, I have one biggest part, one big part of portion of my degree is um, pedagogy. So Yoshi informs me a lot on this side of music career, music teaching, because I don't, I taught before, but not, was, was not as systematic as it should be. So Yoshi taught me the way how to be a good teacher, how to map out or uh, plan out what you are going to teach every day and give students positive thoughts and inference. So that's Yoshi taught me. Of course, he has amazing musicality as well, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> that, that. On top of that, he gave me a lot of this kind of training and exercise. Mm -hmm. Erica, have you ever considered changing careers outside of music at any point? I will say yes and no, but I enjoy my music career a lot. So I tell myself in the future, when I retire, I'm definitely going to open a coffee shop. <laughs> so that's my thought of changing a career for the future. <laughs> but right now, I was sticking with music. Love that. <laughs> um, I was thinking the music in your coffee shop, Erica. <laughs> it's like the we can do that. Do the both at the same time. Have a little area for live performance. Mm -hmm. that's a big idea. Yes. Could you share with us um, a bit more about your teaching philosophies and your approach to teaching music? My approach to teaching music. Um, I am those kind of people. I like to respect the old, but also learn from the new. So my teaching philosophy, or I will tell my students, you always have to learn and have a solid foundation. That's something old to learn from the past, to learn from the music and have solid foundation. And then you can explore all the new stuff, contemporary music, extended technique, any kind of cross um, combination, um, music interaction, everything you can do. It's very important. So for me, something old and something new. It's a that's something you have to think of. Um, my teaching philosophy. Mm -hmm. Could you share with us about your chamber music career, Erica? I will say my chamber music career because um, I haven't do that as a for living. But um, I would like to share my chamber music um, experience. I was very fortunate. I started to play the wooden quintet since high school. It's very unusual. Like you have five wooden instruments students who are also major in those five instruments. So we put a group together and I started playing it when I was in high school, throughout college with the different groups, throughout my doctoral degree. So I was fortunate to have Udo and Quintet experience for many, many years. And could you share with us about your orchestra career? Um, I play in orchestra often. And after I graduated, um, I freelance between many orchestras in Oklahoma, in Virginia, Washington, DC, New York. So I freelance, and then sometimes I will go back to 
China, Taiwan, um, to be the freelance musician there as well too. Amazing. And it'd be really great to hear about a memorable competition experience. Oh my God. <laughs> competition experience. Okay. Um, so um, I have a very interesting competition experience that I can think of. Um, I was doing a competition. Um, I believe it was my junior year in college. I drove like three, four hours to Wichita to do a competition there for the semifinal round. And unfortunately that day, I had a huge memory slip. Basically it was totally, I forgot the music for almost like a phrase or 10 bars. I don't even know how did that happen. My brain was suddenly just in blank. And I was so upset after the competition. I, I thought I won't be able to make it. So I drove another four hours back home. And by the end of the day, I got the call. They called me and said, congratulations, you advanced to the final round. I was like, what? What's going on? Say, yeah, you're in the final round, so please come back next day morning to do the final round. I was like, wow. So I drove another four hours back in next day morning, and I performed the final round. After that, I asked Judge, why? It's unbelievable you guys give me this opportunity to come back. I was like, how? That's incredible. How did that happen? They say, we know you had a huge memory slip. That's, but we want to give you one more chance. I was like, what? He said, you have to understand performing, it's not just about news, memorization. It's more than just memory. Your performance convinced us, your musicality convinced us, your passion to the music convince us to give you one more chance. I know that's a big mistake, a mistake you made on stage, but you convinced us, convinced us you can make it, you can do better. So we give you one more chance and you did well. So congratulations for driving back another four hours. I was like, oh my God, this is something I cannot think of. Like it, people give you one more chance, and they also taught me music, it's more than just the notes, it's everything. Every, every um, interpretation, musicality, passion, everything into your performance, not just on memorize. So that is something story I want to share to people. <laughs> That's amazing, Erica. And just thinking about just performance nerves and mm -hmm. just getting nervous, could you share with us any advice or tips on coping with music performance anxiety if that's something you've experienced? Just like I said earlier, um, I don't know that counts as one of the, I forgot about music, that counts for performance anxiety or not. Maybe yes, maybe not, but I convince myself that that is not just a blackout, that's for me. So um, I try to tell myself I don't have performance anxiety and I don't think I have either because um, I get excited when I perform in front of people. I don't get excited to speak in front of people, but I get very, I get <laughs> very excited to perform in front of people. I think that is something maybe helped me to, con to convey my performance anxiety, I just tell myself, that's not nervous. I don't, I'm not nervous. That's not anxiety, that's excitement. Mm -hmm. That probably is one of the tips for myself too. Mm -hmm. And do you have any advice for any musicians just starting out their music careers? Wow. I would say musicianships reflects who you are as a person. Um, 
it reflects your life, your personality. So no matter what happened, um, to build the knowledge and skill, you need to you just need to learn, be open minded, to explore all the new things, be absorptive like a sponge to absorb the water, to learn everything possible as you can, as much as you can. So that is something I, of course, give the advice to the younger generation. Of course, there are something you have to make a, a judgment. And to see if that's correct or wrong, that's just something you have to learn from your experience and guide yourself to the right direction. Mm -hmm. And Erica, are there any skills that come to mind that, that we learn in music that apply to everyday life? Wow, um, definitely the first one, discipline. Who can sit in front of the bench for hours and hours and play? That is something, discipline. And what we learn, um, I think the next one will be um, willing to do everything. Because, yeah, like sitting in front of music stands, reading the music, it's boring and hard and difficult. And nobody can help you besides yourself. You are the only person can help yourself. Of course, your mentors, teachers, but in order to sit there, you have to be concentrated and think everything that's only on you. So disciplines, willing to do things, highly concentrate, of course, multitask ability, that's something we'll, we'll do in our life as well too. Great. And then is there anyone that you would be interested to suggest to be interviewed next for this project? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I was going to introduce you to you two of my teachers, Mr. Carl Red and Professor Yoshi Ishikawa. But since you already introduced um, Mr. Carl Red and Professor Carl Red already, so I will uh, recommend it to you. Um, Professor Yoshi Shikawa. He's a professor at the University of Colorado at Boulder. And there are so many people I can think about. Um, another one I can think right off my head right now is Martin Cooksman. He's also one of the uh, Muslim artists, international artists. And he's a professor at Denver University right now an amazing amazing player and if i remember correctly he is like so many times uh grammy award nomination if i remember correctly both uh professors are amazing and worth to be interviewed well thank you erica i would love to reach out to both of them and mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for your time today and for the opportunity to interview you. So thank you so much for this chance to hear more about your life and career as a professional musician. So thank you. Thank you for having me here. Thank you, Julie. Check out Erica's live hosting discussion session coming up this Sunday, where she's sharing about the Asian Double Read Association, more about working in music and administration, preparation advice for auditions, competitions, and freelancing, and so much more. So please like, comment, and share any questions or feedback in the section below, and we'd be happy to incorporate these in the live discussion. Please subscribe to this channel and turn on the bell for notifications, which really helps keep the music link moving forward. The Music Link is a New Zealand-based resource for people around the world to share, learn, and connect through music. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next video.